All right, guys, you got the uh, beam of light shining off my head. You know what that means. It means I'm going live and I'm preparing to dazzle you. Get it? Dazzle you? All right. Uh, so, hey, Perry, what's going on, my friend? Um, I'm here to dazzle you. Uh, I have just acquired the Senate. How you doing, my friend? Um, a near full run of Dazzler at a, a sale yesterday. Bro, if you saw my whole videos, um, then you know that I uh, I got this. And Dazzler is a, a character that I've always liked, but um, I wasn't... Uh, I hadn't read a lot of her stuff. I've read a few of the issues back in the you know eighties when they came out, uh, and I love those Bill Sankovich covers. Uh, but I haven't, um, I haven't like really gotten totally into the character. Hey, Joe, I like the Dazzler too, um, and I learned a lot um, by reading. I literally sat down and read the run today. I, I kind of skimmed a few issues, but uh, I really, really read a lot more Dazzler than I ever have before and um, learned some really interesting things uh, and just stuff I wanted to share with people because I know if I put these comics away, I'm not going to um, I'm not gonna get them out and go over them again. So uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, no, let's get a drink of water. Then we'll jump right into it. Because I know that uh, <laughs> she kills Thanos in a what if. Well, I don't know if she's that powerful, but it's a what if. A what if is a what if, right? So starting off here, Dazzler makes her debut in X-Men 130. Is that right? Yeah, X-Men 130. Uh, Chris Claremont, obviously. Uh, one of the uh, classics in his run. And, you know... She makes her debut in the same manner that a lot of X-Men made their debut. This is kind of a two-part comic. Uh, the first part is Wolverine and Storm are captured by the um, captured by the White Queen and the Hellfire Club. And Kitty Pride, who's just joined or hasn't even joined, she's running around. She's not an X-Men yet. She, uh, I think the Hellfire Club is trying to uh, recruit her, too. She's running around in her like 1979 out outfit trying to um, recruit them. But the second part of the story is Cyclops and uh, Phoenix are on the way to um, to recruit a mutant because Cerebro has discovered a mutant. And, you know, you know Cerebro. Um, if you don't know Cerebro, that's the machine Professor X made it to locate mutants everywhere. So they go to a concert. They're like, where are we going to find a mutant at a concert, a discotheque like this? And of course... And there she is, the Dazzler. Um, and she converts noise energy, sound energy into light energy that she can um, disperse any way that she wants, really, uh, to blind people, to dazzle people, to hurt people. By the way, is this the first appearance of Rom in a comic book, this advertisement for Rom Space Night? Uh, it could be, right? I don't know. Um, I don't give much credence to first appearances that are like the first appearance in a uh, in an advertisement. I don't think that counts, but I just thought it was interesting. So, um, really, that's all that happens, except you get a close up look at her makeup here. Right, this kind of blue star. I, you know, it's supposed to be Disco Queen, but it's way more rem reminiscent of Kiss at the time. Um, Ace Freely and Peter Chris doing the whole star thing. Um, Anyone wants to know, I did a Who Are They Dazzler video. Oh, well, then I will have to check that out. You probably know more than I do, Perry, or at least as much as I do, and probably I will be able to fill in a few of the – I just ripped the Mylar – a few of the gaps here. Put this one away carefully. And that brings us to Dazzler issue number one, which has really an amazing cover. And um, one of the things that – I found really fascinating about this is for a comic that's a first issue for somebody as much as it <laughs> focuses on her, it has a lot of heroes showing up right away in there. Um, and so one thing I'm going to point out about this, first of all, is there is a printing error in some of these. And I can't, uh, Jay Black pointed this out. I think it was Jay Black. Somebody pointed this out on Instagram yesterday. Uh, 
pages 24 and 25 are supposed to be colored. Some of issue number ones are black and white. And so that puts this up just a little bit higher in the price range, not like a major thing, but a little bit up. So, you know, this, this establishes Dazzler. She's young. She wants to be a singer. Uh, she badly wants to be a singer. She's in this uh, stage, a disco, a disco queen. Um, clearly they started her off in a disco era. She has a little transistor radio. She carries around her handbag so she can always make the noise that then gives her the power to dazzle people with her light energy. Um, part of her power is that really power. Part of her skill is that she roller skates really well. So apparently on roller skates, she can maneuver better or as well as most people can on um, regular, uh, regular ground or regular feet. Um, she has special magnetic roller skates that or it's roller skates that magnetically adhere to her boots. Apparently her boots are made of metal. Um, you know, this is all very much Marvel in, in the late seventies and eighties, um, all this sort of stuff. So she has this battle in the beginning. And so they kind of open up showing you, Hey, here's Dazzler getting her boots on and using her radio. And then boom, uh, Spidey sees and says, do you need any help? And she's like, nah, I'm good. And then Spidey's like, bye. And she's like, bye Spidey. And then she goes home and realizes she's like dead poor and doesn't even have enough to cover the rent. And there's nothing in the fridge. So you get this typical, like, uh, this is building Dashley's story, her power, her situation, her dreams, her hopes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, person she's calling on the phone is Aurora because she's like, maybe I'll join the X-Men. I know they wanted me to join, but the whole thing is, uh, uh, I'm going to try stream yard soon. Yeah. That's, um, that's my, my next, uh, my next thing to work on, but uh, as long as I can keep doing it this way, I will. So the whole thing is the X-Men are like, you're not serious about being an X-Men. You want to fall back in case your music career doesn't work. So Dazzler hangs up. She's like, yeah, you're right. And then they kind of flash back to her um, stream yard. Now, Biggie, is that like, is stream yard, if I want to stream, um, stream stuff with multiple people, or is it good for like, um, just me doing my thing like this, right? Because I don't really know anything about it. I mean, is that where I can like talk and hold up the book in two different cameras and stuff? Uh, let me know what StreamYard is good for. Because I don't, I hear people like OBS, StreamYard, big battle. Maybe we should have a big battle with them, but I don't know like what's going on. So let me know, uh, let me know what's up with that. So anyway, the other part of her origin story is her dad. Her dad's a lawyer. Her dad wants her to be a lawyer. Dad pushes her and she's younger. She just wants to be a singer. And in high school, you know, she tries out and sings. And, of course, she dazzles the crowd with her voice. But then dad gets mad. And uh, she graduates high school, magna cum laude. And uh, dad wants her to go. <laughs> uh, it could be. We're, we're both from New York. Um, I don't know. Dad wants her to go into law school, and she doesn't, and that causes a split. Mom, of course, isn't around. Grandma loses dad, but grandma isn't ready to defy dad. So the second half of this book is absolutely ridiculous, right? We now go to Asgard, Rainbow Bridge, so we know we're in Asgard. Um, and in Asgard, the Enchantress has, like, a warrior trying to knock on her door as a suitor, and she's like, you know, F off, turns him into a, a tree, and she kind of speaks to herself. I don't know if you guys read Marvel in like the early 80s. Everybody had thought bubbles and spoke to themselves, um, either, you know, exposition out loud or thought bubbles. And they really don't exist this way anymore. Um, so she's just, you know, chilling and she's like, gosh, I want to go be a pop star on Earth. But that Dazzler woman is getting all the good gigs. So she goes down to Earth. Um, and here's like this weird thing where now we see the Avengers in this book. Beast reads in the newspaper that like somebody's looking for a new singer. So he almost knocks half the Avengers over just on his way to go, um, you know, to go find Dazzler. So he finds a Dazzler, she tells her, Hey, you should go to this audition. But of course the Enchantress is there too. And the Enchantress is totally hot. And the guy's like, ah, Enchantress, you're hottest, but Dazzler, you've got a better voice. So I choose the Dazzler. And of course, Enchantress is not happy about that. So she's going to have something to say about that uh, in issue two, which is the big concert where, you know, the Enchantress shows up, but not just the Enchantress, 
tons of people show up. Let me see if I can find a good splash page here for you. So like Last Stand in Disco Land, guest starring Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, X-Men Avengers. That's some heavyweights to have in the second issue of your book, you know? That's, uh, that's pretty darn good. So she's pretty happy. The first page is like, you know, Ben Grimm getting uh, getting dressed with Johnny. And, uh, Hold your horses, Torchy. This dad blasted ties as ornery as old Duck Doom. You know, classic 80s Marvel again. Uh, Cap puts on a suit over his shield, which I find absolutely uh, hysterical. So, yeah, send it. I mean, you know, this bald head isn't just fashion. I'm, I'm a bit older. Uh, and, you know, in retrospect, not a lot of these stories are good in the way comics are written um, today. But one of the things I found as I got through this run was I started to really get into the character and really feel for the character. So they were writing in a different time, but they weren't necessarily writing bad. It was just like a different style of writing. And it's hard to explain unless you grab yourself a cheap run of like, you know, 10 or 20 comics from the, the mid to early 80s of, of a popular group and, and just read them straight. You really get a feel for them. So check out this, right? You've got the thing beast in this like green plaid jacket right so this is 1978 aurora wolvie tony stark you just got like all these people kind of chilling another thing they did hey later biggie thank you very much for being here um another thing they did is they name drop like uh they they name drop a lot a lot of people in here they name drop pink floyd uh, they name drop uh, Janet Jackson, um, just a lot. Was it Janet Jackson? I think it was Janet Jackson. Just a really lot, a lot of people in here, which is really hysterical to me um, that they do that. And, of course, the Enchantress shows up and melts Dazzler's face, which I find really funny because I never knew that she got her face melted. You look down the bottom here, her face is getting super melted. And the Enchantress brought a bunch of Asgardian goons, and they get into a big fight with... Uh, with everyone, Spider-Man's there and the Avengers are there because you know all the superheroes come out to see a uh, <laughs> come out to see a concert. I mean, it's it's really this is the kitschy stuff that just like makes you crack up when you look at it, you know, back in in retrospect. But uh, it's you know this is what Marvel did. This is how they got into their characters, and and they've done a good job because apparently we're still loving them 30, 40 years later, right? Um, not much else going on here except these ads where you can get like giant size X-Men for 60 bucks always crack me up too. Um, so let's fast forward a bit. Oh, the Enchantress is going to win, but apparently the sorcery power she used to create the portal down to earth, um, caused the portal to be, uh, unsteady and she had to vanish back to Asgard. That's how they win. Um, but then a guy was hiding under the table and he's like, Hey, I know a producer, go meet this producer. And, and so kind of one of the themes that we're going to see, and I'm going to go a bit faster through all these issues. One of the themes that we're going to see throughout is that like producers are slime balls. who keep trying to rip her off. This guy won't even give her the time of day until the uh, superheroes hang outside his window and are like, give her a chance, give her a chance. Um, yeah, so the Senate, if I was to put these away, I probably wouldn't end up reading them. That's why, you know, I had the day off on you know, Sunday and I just figured my wife's working all day. My kids are happy doing what they do. Um, so I'm going to read this all the way through. So I read most of these. Some of them I, I got. So I'm missing issue four and five, which were Dr. Doom issues. Um, and then issue five, the blue shield appears. So the blue shield is a guy who has a blue aura power, whatever that is. He's a crime boss whose superhero identity actually fights against the crime syndicate that he's um, the leader of. Um, yeah, Joe, I've got that too. I'll, I'll get, get through that. That's pretty cool. Apparently that's like a $10, $12 comic, which is pretty cool. So Dazzler fights the Blue Shield, then Dazzler fights with the Blue Shield against the big tank, and not much important happens in this one um except dazzler gets the blue shield see dazzler had run into the blue shield's mom at in the hospital um so yeah that's that's all i got to say on that because there ain't really much else to say uh next issue she hulk appears but not really wearing a costume um she's wearing the most ridiculous like negligee oh so now you meet dazzler's 
band members, including Beefer, who's like this chubby kid who's the drummer, which I find hysterical. Beefer is his nickname. Um, and he doesn't, uh, oh, he doesn't, um, Dazzler gets revealed as a mutant or somebody accused of being a mutant fights. She falls in love with the doctor. They're going out on a date. Um, then she, oh, this is not She-Hope. This is the Hulk one. I'm sorry. She runs into Bruce Banner, who has to take his tranquilizer pills. Hey, Chris, to not um, to not turn into Hulk, but it doesn't work. He turns into Hulk. They battle. It's this, you know, Hulk in his one word, you know, monosyllabic way. Now there is only the Hulk, and Hulk wants to people leave him alone into battle. So Dazzler's got to fight the Hulk. The Hulk is super powerful. Dazzler's light blasts aren't that powerful. Um, which is why that what if where she beats Thanos is really hysterical. But she can create images and right Hulk hates the uh Hulk hates tanks, so because the army's always after him. So that kind of scared him. Um and then you know she finally gets him knocked out somehow with a super burst. Uh and then the next issue continues with more Hulk. So that's six, seven. You've got to admit, the lady's got guts. Now, somewhere in here, and I don't know exactly where um, it started, but uh, somewhere in here, she actually has a catchphrase. Anybody down in the comments know Dazzler's catchphrase? Put it put it in the comments if you know Dazzler's catchphrase, and I'll send you um, – it, it never caught on. So I, unless you read these, you might not know it. First person, put it in the comments. I will send uh, – I got a couple extra Sankovich um, Dazzler covers I'll send you. Not in great condition, so don't be expecting like the world. But I'll send you a few extras. Um, yeah, it, it, I didn't know either. It never caught on. I had to read this to know. Um, if I if I find it before you guys do that, it's it's over. So she's still battling the Hulk. Um, and then there's a bunch of goons who are hired by Harry Osgood or to, sent to go after her producer. So it sets up another storyline. Uh, run silver lady run and hulk will let you live but then there's soldiers outside so dazzle protects the hulk from the soldiers you know it goes on and on with the whole like um it, it's a typical hulk issue as much as it's a dazzler issue uh finally um the hulk sees some dogs and he's like oh cute puppies and he starts to calm down and um he's rescuing all the puppies Right here is a handful of puppies in the Hulk's hand. Uh, Dazzler comes in and fights the soldiers. You know, it's that usual thing. Somebody's first an adversary of the Hulk, but then uh, helps the Hulk against worse people. Um, and then he turns back into Bruce Banner and walks away. But Dazzler left a note in his hand. Best of luck, Dazzler. So now Bruce Banner knows that Dazzler is a friend. And this is kind of those issues where the Hulk is just... Um, just wandering around, uh, not behold the dazzler. Good, good, good um, guess. So then this mysterious guy appears down here, and he's from Project Pegasus. I'm not too familiar with Project Pegasus. But apparently, it's one of those secret government organizations that like works on people to discover their powers, but also keeps them locked away. And that's what we get up into this really horrible cover. Um, whoever did these reds and oranges and yellows didn't get it right here. This is just, that's not a good cover. Uh, so just, you know, this started off written by Tom DeFalco and drawn by a guy named Danny Fingeroth. And then Danny Fingeroth took over the, uh, the writing just so people know, uh, colors by Don Warfield letters by, you know, Jim Shooter was the editor in chief. Otherwise I don't know. So anyhow, she, um, she's got a producer. She's got a band. She fights with the producer because um, he doesn't like uh, – she doesn't like him all the time. Uh, but they're pretty good. And then the enforcers come in, and they're the ones who are after the producer um, because a mob boss doesn't like the producer from some time back in the day. I can't remember. This is the sort of stuff you forget. Um but the guy who doesn't like their producer that hires the enforcers is called the tech master. The tech master. Yeah. Um, let me dazzle you. No, not yet. God, I mean, look, this like bad 
Thor art is imprinted, and this ad here is imprinted on my brain from childhood. Go for it, Chris Barrett. Uh, hit me up on Instagram, Chris Barrett. Send me your um, send me your your address. Uh, just DM me on on Instagram, and I'll send you a couple Dazzler uh, issues. Nice job, Chris Barrett. Yeah, so she like will have a thought bubble, and I'll see if I can find it here where she's um where she's talking to herself, and then she's like. And I just have to, and then the next panel, she's speaking out loud, and she's like, go for it. It's the way she psychs herself out. So well known that <laughs> none of us knew it. Um, yeah, so let's see. Not much is happening in this issue, which is why I'm going through it pretty quickly, because you don't need to see it if I don't. Um, she defeats the goons that are after her boss, but then as she's running away, she gets caught. Does she get caught? Um, no, she doesn't get caught. Really nothing happens in here except she defeats the goons that are after her boss. There you go. Um, <laughs> every day. Uh, so then here's another 80s Marvel, Quasar. Anybody remember Quasar? She gets into, caught by this, captured by this Pegasus project. And they're like, we want to study your powers. And she's like, oh, okay, that sounds good. So she didn't really get captured, just kind of coerced into going there. And she meets Quasar. <laughs> I'm glad she says this. He goes, but we can talk about that later. I've been assigned to give you a tour of the project. She's like, oh, sure. What a ridiculous outfit he's wearing. So he is wearing a ridiculous outfit. And she even says it to herself, which I think is great. <laughs> She's an absolutely ridiculous. Um, it's not used the same way she does. It's more like, go for it, why not? Yeah. Oh, I get you. Um, yeah, she uses it to psych herself up. Um, so, yeah. She's in this thing, and she's doing all these experiments. But there's one guy who's trapped in here, and this is Claw. And I don't know if this is the same Claw that we have. Apparently, he's not allowed to speak. He can only type on computers. I don't know if this is the same Claw that we know um, from the Black Panther movies. I think it is because he's got the arm, but it's much earlier iteration of, of his character. Um, so let's see what's going on. Uh, she doesn't like all these tests that are happening. Um People are worried that she's missing because they keep calling her. Uh, so like Johnny Storm. Who's, and so another thing, another little um, side thing is all the suitors she has, right? She's got, she dates a lawyer at one point. She's got a doctor who, she, who likes her. Um, Johnny Storm likes her. Angel likes her. Um, Warren Worthington III. Uh, so she's got a lot of people, right? But she's obviously getting fed up in Project Pegasus. Further tests. Uh-uh, I ain't going, I ain't down with that. So she wants to get out of here, but she doesn't like what they're doing to this um, claw guy. So she lets him out. She argues with Pegasus. They, they make up over coffee. Um, she eventually lets him out. And then she's like, ha, ah, you dumb girl. <laughs> that was a mistake. I'm going to go do evil things now. You may not like Project Pegasus, but they were right to lock me up. Um, so, yeah. That happens. They fight. They fight. They fight some more. They fight some more. Some of this is really good stuff. Some of this is not. Um, but then the last page, there is a drone of some sort uh, looking over, over, looking through a computer monitor at her. And we're left to wonder why. And the why is because Galactus needs Dazzler's help, which I think is really crazy. So one of Galactus's uh, heralds is um, is lost in a black hole or ran away to a black hole to escape uh, Galactus's wrath, and Galactus ain't having none of his heralds get into no black hole to escape his wrath because I'm Galactus, and if you mess with me, I got to get you back. So, of course, what can fight a black hole? Light. So they're going to provide uh, Dazzler with an incredible amount of, like, power. He gives her a safety bubble so she can breathe. All her friends are looking for her. The band's looking for her. They're all looking for her. Um, Dad's, Dad's mad that um, Grandma is looking for her because Grandma's not supposed to have any contact with her. So Terax um, tells Dazzler, Hey, you know, I'm in this black hole because Galactus made me do all these horrible things to these civilizations, and I ain't down with that. And she's like, well, 
I got to get you out of here or I'm in trouble. Uh, and Galactus will kill me. I don't want to be killed. So she fights in a black hole. This is all black hole fighting stuff. I know that's what you thought fighting in a black hole would be like. Um, oh, sorry. There's the black hole she's entering. I don't know what she was doing before, powering up or something. That's what a black hole looks like. Hey, man, Senate, thanks for stopping by. I will give you a sub in a little bit. I appreciate it. Uh, and then you get this great shot down here. Terrax swinging the axe. It's really cool art there. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how, like, some of this stuff is so mundane. Some of this stuff is so classically good. Um, and here's another. Now, I remember that, that, that issue, like, from back in the day. All right, so here we go. We've got the second half of that storyline. And uh, she's still in makeup. She's still fighting Terrax. Uh, but she brings him back to Galactus to stand trial, basically. And then she ends up arguing on, on, Galact on Terrax's behalf. And of course, Galactus is like, you need human. I am not even interested in what you have to say. Okay, maybe I will be interested in what you have to say. Um, doctor's riding a bike. Dad's in the car getting upset. You know, these themes, like I said, they reoccur throughout the Dazzler books. Um, of course, she, she, she argues on Terex's behalf, and she wins. And so Galactus is like, all right. I'll send you back and everything is groo groovy and good. But back on Earth, Dazzle's been missing for three issues now issue since they, Project Pegasus took her away. And this is kind of funny, right? They're all wondering where she is. So they all show up at the door, the band, the producer, the friend, and dad. And she's passed out on the couch. Why is she passed out? She's been freaking fighting Terax in a black hole and doing lawyer duties in front of Galactus. That would make anybody tired and pass out on the couch. But... In typical Marvel fashion, the band is like, oh, man, she's just been partying hard. We didn't have to worry. Dad's like, I was worried about her. I'm never talking to her again. She's just a wasted druggie, right? And so there's this whole misinterpretation. Um, she's like, I'm fine, man. I just need some rest. I've been in space in a black hole. And the band's like, oh, she's been a week-long party. She's fine. And then dad's like, so this is what you people call okay? Your values are sick, as sick as my daughter has become. And then her boyfriend, who I think at this point was the doctor one, kisses her on the lips while she's passed out, which is really kind of rapey. Um, and so over here, they're like, ah, she's fine. Dad's like, no way. And boyfriend's like, I'll give you a little kiss in the lips while you're, you're passed out and phased out in drugs. Um, and then, of course... Techmaster comes back next issue. So we jump to next issue, and I'll move it along here. Um, his Techmaster is not that interesting. Um, but he comes back, and he's very mad. And Dazzler's singing at a gig and going out on a date and doing some kissy-kissy stuff down here. Um, so she's having a good time with Paul. Things were different back then. Um, at least the perception of things were different back then. Uh, yeah, we're grooving and moving and moving and grooving. Big fight with, not even a big fight with Techmaster. Just gets into a Techmaster. Um, and then, yeah, not much happened here. Uh, at some point, the her producer pulls Techmaster from, like, where he's about to fall out an office window. And so Techmaster says, okay. I was about to kill you, but you saved me, so we're, we're straight now. And the problem with Techmaster as a villain is Techmaster was never after Dazzler. She just got in the way. So it's uh, it was never like a, a, a person that she had a big problem with. So it kind of just never went anywhere. All right, now we just get ridiculous. Dazzler versus the Grapplers. Those are not the Grapplers. Those are just really bad art. Um <laughs> really suggestive so she is in prison at rikers island um she discovers a brooch that belongs to her mom and that plays in key later because remember she's never met her mom yet uh this is issue 13 14 so so far i've only missed issues three issues three and four i'm gonna bump through these a bit i just want to make sure i don't miss anything major for you guys 
so that you know everything about Dazzler. Oh, she breaks up with the doctor who took her to a fancy restaurant so she wouldn't cause a scene. Of course she causes the scene and now people are after her and she's shooting them and um, and blinding them with light. Uh, she ends up accidentally killing someone in self-defense and so she ends up going to jail and this orange fluffy haired dude becomes a lawyer and then her boyfriend later on. Um, she's always causing a scene or somebody's causing a scene, I don't know. Um, so she's in Rikers and of course Rikers is run by girl gangs. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, right? And they want her to fight, but they don't realize that she can fight. And so somebody's playing a radio somewhere and Dazzler lets loose. And all of a sudden the grapplers realize they've met their match. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, but the lawyer gets her off and she's happy. So what do I do when my lawyer gets me off? Well, I date him uh, because that's that's the only thing to do. So there you go. Um, Rikers, Rikers. But um boom. There's She-Hulk. She-Hulk is wearing the barest slip of a slip. And it's just ridiculous in this. Uh, oh, this guy... Uh, has a lot of guns. Let's see what that's all about. The band plays. Um, the lawyer sends her a note. Um, yeah, it, it was pretty risque, but it's, oh, so there's a guy who's shooting in the audience, but he's shooting at the Blue Shield, who is watching her in the audience, not shooting at Dazzler. She-Hulk shows up. Um, yeah, there's not much going on in this one except for She-Hulk's ridiculous outfit. Um, let's see if I can show you a good shot of that. Uh, oh, She-Hulk is under mind control. That's right. So that's how she fights Dazzler, first of all. Um, so here's some She-Hulk fighting in a negligee uh, art for you. And, of course, Dazzler's going to blast her with her, her, her light and that will cause She-Hulk to uh, lose the mind control, and then She-Hulk will join her side. And so then there's Blue Shield fighting, and then Dazzler and She-Hulk are friends, and She-Hulk takes her for a ride in a truck, and Dazzler's scared of how fast She-Hulk's driving. Now, She-Hulk is Jennifer Walters, who is the famous lawyer, like Dazzler's dad wanted her to be. You see the connections they put in there? So yeah, all this stuff happens. Um, they use the power of the truck horn to create more power for Dazzler, and that's that. And, of course, now we're guest starring Spider-Woman. And they go through a labyrinth, and they try to escape. And I think we've now lost the blue eye makeup, and we've lost the... Um, and we've lost the... Uh, the white uh, one piece disco leotard. So this this comic now comes out in 1982, and so we're well past that time period, right? Uh, the reason why she teamed up with Spider Woman, I'm not going to waste everybody's time with every single issue of this, uh, is because Jessica Drew is a private investigator and she's trying to find out more about her mother. And so, well, there she has the costume on, but I don't think we see this costume too much more in the series. Let's see. Enchantress is back. I always liked these tendrils. I always liked this. Um, Enchantress is back. Oh, you know what? She still has the disco costume on. Is back uh, for, I don't know, revenge of some sort. Uh, so there's a fight with Enchantress. Not much else happens because Enchantress is pretty, Enchantress is pretty, pretty hot, pretty smoking hot. Um, you know, very classical, stereotypical, beautiful blonde way. Um, but somehow, Dazzler beats her, uh, or Odin comes down and is like, dude, what's going on, right? And then the Warriors 3 are there, because why not just throw the Warriors 3 um, in there? So, you know, there's uh, there's some more stuff going on. Not, not much there. Um, and then, you know, she's now got a new boyfriend, and that is her lawyer. So there we go. Moving right along, people. That's... Issue 16, we have about 20 more. The run goes up to 40, but I'm missing a few. And I'm missing 17 and 18. Uh, this one's pretty cool. 
because the Inhumans get Dazzler to help them with a problem. Now, if you know Black Bolt, his power is his voice is so loud and powerful, it can kill people. That's why he never talks. What is Dazzler's power? She converts sound into energy. So they figure by using Black Bolt's uh, super powerful voice, they can give Dazzler super powerful energy and they can beat the super powerful um, bad guys that are trapping the Inhumans on their home world or doing something bad to the Inhumans. Not much else that goes on there, except this is where Angel shows up. I'm not really sure where the Angel-like love interest story started, but it was somewhere around here. And that brings us to issue 20. Halfway through the series, we started out in early 80. We are now in 1982. Issue 20, uh, 60 cents. Yep, October of 82. Danny Fingeroff is still the writer. Frank Springer, Springer is still the uh, artist. And she's having flashbacks or dreams about fighting against her dad. Um, her dad has gone into this like catatonic state where he's like, my daughter's betrayed me, and Allison Blair doesn't know anything about this. By the way, Allison Blair is B-L-A-I-R-E, which I always found interesting. Um, she fights off a mugger in Central Park. Doesn't everybody do that in the Marvel Universe at some point? And her locket that she found a couple of issues ago falls open, and not only is her dad's picture there, but another guy. So why does her mom have a picture of two guys in a locket? We'll find out. So I'm glad that two people are with me late on a Sunday night as I go through every Dazzler issue I own. I, I can't tell you. There's two bad guys in this issue. And their name are Johnny Sax or Dr. Sax and Johnny Guitar. That's Johnny Sax and Dr. Guitar. <laughs> they have powers related to their instruments and they're going to fight Dazzler's band. And I'm not sure why. This is one of those ones that even for me, it looked um, it looked too painful to really go through in uh, in deep detail. So I was like, I kind of skipped through this one. Um, but I don't know if you ever saw Carlito's Way. That's the only thing this lawyer reminds me of is Sean Penn's character in Carlito's Way. Uh, and then there's Angel knocking at his door. Like, what does that creep want? And just like, I know we got off on a bad foot and that we're both fighting for um, we're both fighting for the uh, affections of Dazzler, but she's missing and I'm worried. So the, uh, we'll, we'll get together. So the, the lawyer gives gives him um, gives Angel an address. Dazzler fights off Johnny Saxon, Dr. Guitar or Dr. Saxon, Johnny Guitar. Um, and then I think the uh, Angel doesn't even show up, but but. We find out this um, little side thing now. We see Dazzler's mom and Dazzler's friend. Nobody knows this is Dazzler's mom. Dazzler's friend who's taking music and singing lessons from Dazzler's mom and finds Dazzler memorabilia in the uh, closet. And she's like, what is this? What are you looking in my closet for? And she's like, I just wandered in here. I found all this stuff. She's like, oh, my daughter is a big Dazzler fan. She just left the stuff here when she moved out. And she's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Of course, she's lying. It's Dazzler's mom who doesn't talk to Dazzler's dad and who Dazzler doesn't know. Something's going on. Now, this is actually one of the worst covers in the entire run, in my opinion, and one of the best stories in the entire run. This is a double, um, double length issue, 38 pages. This was a good storyline. I really dug this. This one kind of brought everything together. So it starts off with this really nice shot of Angel carrying Dazzler over New York City. Hey, somebody else just joined us. So it's not just Chris and Joe. Tell us who you are, friend. Um, and it kind of recaps a lot of the stuff that happens. Spider-Man sees him swinging by. But then uh, Angel brings her to her dad's house. He's like, you know, I heard your dad is not doing well. Um, and then uh, dad is still fighting with Allison. So there's still this like deal going on where dad can't accept that Allison is going down this dark path or in his mind, this dark path um, of singing 
and and in his mind, drugs and alcohol and and all that. And he tells her why finally, because her mom was the same way, and her mom and he got along really well. But once her once uh, Allison was born, the dad's like, "I want you to stop this singing career," and he's like, "You can't make me stop." I love singing. He's like, you need to be a respectable mother. So she runs off with another guy who gets her into drugs and drinking and alcohol um, and all that stuff. So this is the first time uh, Dazzler's ever heard of any of this. And so she is predictably upset. But look at this, right? This is stuff that you don't realize they did back then, but they, they, they did great stuff like this. The head of Dazzler and her mom are in the same way. So all this is Dazzler. And we get here, it's that girl, Vanessa, who's taking singing lessons from Dazzler's mom. And Dazzler's mom, they're saying, yes, it's true. Dazzler's, Dazzler is my daughter. So it's kind of really nice, uh, really nice the way they did this. Um, and, of course, you get a stupid bubble yum, bubble gum advertisement. And then you get more of this, like, now you, kind of the story is picked up by Dazzler's mom talking to Vanessa, saying that's with this guy, but he abused me, but I wouldn't leave him until I finally did and, and all this stuff. And then I gave up singing. I just became a singing teacher and tried to build my life back up. And of course, Vanessa's like, I think it's time you finally meet the Dazzler and get this all over with. Um, and then this is kind of a cool one too. Like they really stereotyped these guys, but this is the producer or her manager. And this is, um, and this is a new producer or concert promoter that he's trying to like meet her up with. And he's, he's got the shirt open down to here, the sunglasses. He's just a real grease ball. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Joe, apparently YouTube didn't like your use of the word, uh, milk downright nerdy podcast is in the house. My friend, how are you? It's good to have you guys here. Um, so anyway, what I really liked about this and what really got you more into this characterization of Dazzler is this slimy concert promoter tries to goose her, tries to pinch her in the ass, and she turns on him, right? But then her manager's like, hey, that's just the way he is. He's He doesn't mean anything by it. He's just being handsy. And it's like, really? You know, that is, that is not right. Well, Dazzler's not doing too well because this concert promoter just grabbed her butt and her manager did not support her. But, you know. It's uh, it's all good, and then the uh, kind of roadie that they have is named Lancelot um, Steel, I think, which is a freaking hysterical name. He's like this good guy who's a dumb lug, uh, which is kind of funny. So she's wary of this concert promoter, but she's going along with it and goes shopping. You can see some Dazzler butt. Gotta love the Dazzler butt, and she's going out with Ken. And then Angel is knocking on Ken's window or on Dazzler's window. Be nice. You have a date with one guy and then another guy flies to your window and you kiss him. I don't know, man. And there's, for the premiere of something, there's the Fantastic Four all dolled up. Look at those peg leg that uh, Reed Richards has. It's crazy. Hey, somebody else is in here. We're up to five now. Um, so what the heck is going on here? Uh it's a gala event they're going to, and I can't remember what it is. This might be one of the ones I skipped, but here's another one of those shots I always love seeing. Is like, there's the Avengers chilling out, right? There's the Beast jumping all around, and there's the Lawyer Ken, and there's Spider-Man. It's a veritable party, you know? Everybody's just chilling here. Um, Dazzle's still got a roller skate, so I'm sorry. This is still roller skate, uh, um roller skate blue makeup. I guess it didn't end as quite as early as I thought. So this is now the, the concert where, um, where Dazzler is mom is supposed to be, but the dad comes. And so has this whole Dazzler let me explain. And they have this nice moment where he kind of is telling her how he feels and she's telling him how she feels, uh, you know, and everything is going good. And then Dazzler's friend Vanessa shows up and is like, Hey, your mom's here. And Dazzler almost doesn't go on right? because she's so sick that her manager let that slimy concert promoter abuse her like that. She's like, uh, she's like, I'm not going to go on. But then her superhero fans in the audience, her dad's there. They've just sort of made up. 
her mom's there. Uh, and so it's a really nice tension. Like everything that we've been going through, the good issues and the, the dorky, silly 80s issues all build up to the, this moment here where Dazzle's like got this dark furrow and just is not sure what to do. And so this is a really, um, I'm talking about issues one through 40, actually X-Men 130 and Dazzler one through 40. So I got the whole run yesterday, downright nerdy. And I just kind of, I read them today. I haven't sat down and read a, a 40 issue comic run like that in a long time. I just said, you know what, I'm going to do it. Uh, and I'm going to talk about them because if I don't talk about them, I ain't going to get to it. Um, so anyway, uh, she decides to go on and she's amazing. And she sings this song, little girl on sunlit lawn dreams of the day when she'll, when she will be grown. She thinks her daddy and mom will always be there. As long as they are, she hasn't a care. Then she grows up all too, too soon. She grows up in the light of the moon tells her great things aren't going to be the way they are in poetry. And all she's left with is little girl's dreams. Right. And then she does her dazzling light show. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it's great. Mom sees her. Mom's like, Oh my God, she's wonderful. Fantastic. Four comes up, tells her how wonderful she is. Uh, so everything kind of works out. Here is where she sees mom and they have this embrace at the bottom of the panel. So it's a really, like I said, it's a really nice issue. Um, Dad sees mom and they kind of say hi, but they're not like too friendly. Um, and then Dazzler just wanted to crash. And because she's so tired from this ordeal, she didn't want to go to the after party. So the after party came to her house and was like, surprise, you know, Iron Fist is there, Spider-Man's there, Luke Cage is there. She's like, what did you do with the French onion dip? And Johnny Storm's like, oh, I put it in the fridge so it wouldn't spoil, or Iron Man. Um, so, yeah, that was, like I said, not a throwaway issue, not just a whatever issue. And now we find out Rogue hates Dazzler and the X-Men. Mystique wants Rogue to beat up Dazzler, actually um, Angel, first of all, so that um, they can then take Angel's Rogue can grab Angel's memories by touching him and stealing all his memories and powers and finding out all the secrets of the X-Men. And because the Dazzler, who's dating Ken, the lawyer, is also friends with with Warren Worthington III, um, she is around him when he gets attacked and she ends up uh, defending him or something. And by the way, he's a looking, a hunky fellow there. Rich and ripped. Gotta like Warren Worthington the third, you know. Rogue has this ridiculous accent where, like, instead of just you know exaggerating it, they'll say like S H O A H for sure. Showa, sure, honey, I'm a gonna punch you into next week. Um, I mean, it's just really, really ridiculous uh, stuff. And then, of course, Mystique becomes Angel's girlfriend um, and and upsets Angel. And they beat up Angel and take her away, but Dazzler comes back um, and uses the sound of, I don't know why they're in a helicopter. Sure thing, honey. That's exactly right. right? Um, and then, of course, Dazzler's sister shows up, Lois, who is um, from the mom and the guy that the mom ran away from Dazzler's dad with. So there's a lot of rogue going on. There's always rogue coming, coming after here. Okay. There's another rogue issue. Ha! Ah, just looks so like ridiculous with this short hair. Not the rogue related we're used to from later. Dazzler, I've come for ya. No use hiding, gal. Show your face. Y O A H. Um, of course, she's not home. Rogue's just mad. Um, so you know, there's there's more of this. Uh, Power Man and Iron Fist show up to fight Rogue. Kind of cool watching Power Man and and. Uh, uh, rogue fight punching it out um, but not much else happens except a lot more fighting Angel who's an X-Men or was an X-Men and um, was uh, was also a defender apparently has to hide out in some gym somewhere so he can fly around freely because he's afraid of Rogue I don't know why he's not getting the X-Men help him out but that would prove the story along I guess I don't know Yo, uh, yeah, a Jersey accent Yo, um, Joyzy, what exit? Joyzy, 
I don't think you'd have the H in the Jersey accent. I mean, we're splitting hairs here, of course. Um, so now Dazzler's stepsister or half-sister, who she's just found, is freaked out now because she just found out that Dazzler's life with these powers is is crazy. Um, so I'm not really sure. And Dazzler finds a PA system somewhere, plugs it in, and now is battling Rogue. So that's pretty cool. Um, they're fighting again, and it looks like Luke Cage comes to, to save them. And then, of course, uh, Rogue finds out the X-Men are lost in space. And it's Dar Jammer's episode, and she chills out. Says, maybe Mystique was right. I shouldn't have gone after Dazzler. Um, Joyzy, what exit? And so Rogue calms down a little bit. But that's not the last we'll see of Rogue going after Dazzler. Um, she's there. But, of course, now the sister is a little freaked out and upset. Uh, so that's going to be another storyline that comes in later. And issue 25, we are still now wearing the outfit. Our hair is a little bit more red than blonde. This, by the way, I love this cover. Right? I wouldn't like it except it's called the Jagged Edge. And so the fact that it's not just a rip, but that this is offset, I think is really, really cool. Right? That is that is some, some slickness there. Um, so what – oh, this is – and this is – you know, really interesting because we think of these things as now we've got Steve Grant writing Mark Bright and pencils. So a new creative team might have been earlier. I didn't I didn't check. Um, but we've got this guy who sends roses to Dazzler. And this whole um, this whole issue is basically about a stalker. Right. And of course, they really get into this like outcast uh, entitled uh, white male who thinks he deserves to be with a the woman and uh, he's stalking her. He's got guns, of course, and he thinks that she'll love him. He goes to a concert, but what's really weird is he knocks on the door. He gets to go backstage and he's like, hi, I'm the one who sent you the roses. You want to go out? She's like, oh yeah, sure. We'll go out. <laughs> Which is <laughs> like for all that this issue is kind of like showing the danger of, of stalker entitlement and people thinking like, you know, you're the one for me. If, if only you'll be with me, you'd see that. They make this mistake of being like, hey, if a guy just shows up and gives you roses, he, he's entitled to a date. So it's a little bit of a, it, she kind of is, but you know, um, it's weird. So then he does some creepy stuff and sends her a note. Says the roses don't excuse my behavior, but I'll destroy destroy the creep who hurt you the most, and that will prove I'm worthy of your love. So of course now she's got to go stop this guy from attacking someone. Um, yeah, I don't know, Chris. It, it didn't work that way for me. I just struggled a bit more. Um, and of course he goes after her dad because he thinks her dad hurt her because he probably told a story about that. Um, and then uh, she disarms him by smacking a door into his face, not using that light power. And, you know, that's it. Uh, what is, is it going to be that way from now on? Watching every step, looking over my shoulders at everyone, is it? And it's like, well, it's going to have to figure it out as you go along. It's like, it's not going to be that hard. You just don't have to, uh, you know, go out with every guy who sneaks backstage after giving you roses. Even I know that. Um, and so this issue, all that really happens in this issue is we find out that Dazzler's sister has powers. Anybody know what ever happened to her? I'm missing a few issues. So I don't know if they concern her. But um, a creep, you know, a scuzzy uh, hobo in the streets of New York City attacks the sister Sister kills him. Sister doesn't know what to do. So they call the same guy that got Dazzler off when she was on trial for murder. And he's like, it's 3 a.m. What are you doing calling me? So he defends. But at the same time now, we get Senator Guyrich, or Guyrich, um, who's sending some people after the Dazzler. Uh, or sending people because he's like, it must have been a mutie who killed this one. So... Dazzler is like kind of hiding with the sister. They go to like a hobo hotel in downtown um, New York and uh, they're hiding out now waiting for the trial, trying to figure out what to do. Uh, and then the manager's cat of the sleazy hotel comes in and scratches the sister. So what does the sister do? Kills the cat. 
<laughs> Don't ask me why. And kills the cat. Right? Dazzle's got this hot little outfit she's hiding in now, which is kind of cool. But the cat's dead, and now she's like, I don't know what to do. Ah. So they get on a bus, and they go away. While well, those goons that Guy would just sent out now are kind of after them. So we'll see what happens next. Now, I don't know if this was his first Marvel work or early Marvel work. This is about this just before he did his New Mutants work. This is like typical art of the era. And then Bill Sankovich comes along, Sinkevich, Sankovich, and is like, hey, guys, guess what I can do if you let me work on a Dazzler book? That's what I can do if you let me work on a Dazzler book. And that is just amazing. It's this matching outfit with a bedspread. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. If you remember what happens in this issue, oh, Rogue attacks him again. More Rogue. Rogue is upset um, that... You know, something. Uh, she's hiding on the bus, and she attacks them. And so there's just more Dazzler and Lois fighting Rogue. Not that interesting. I can't remember. This is the one with the with Dazzler hijacks a plane. Um, oh, of course, Rogue touches Dazzler's sister because Dazzler's sister didn't know any better um, and gains that power. And then their bus goes off a cliff. And then we realized that none of that actually happened. Okay, thanks, Chris. I, I, I wasn't sure. It's just Dazzler having a bad nightmare because all this stuff is kind of getting to her, which is kind of cool. I wish that Sinkovich did the interiors on this. That would have been awesome. Um, uh, but, of course, now we find out somebody saw her killing that hobo and is now blackmailing them. So the plot thickens while the plot also gets really in disarray and we don't even know what's going on. So they call that guy, and uh, there's some rich guy at a pool. Do you think it could be the one who was the uh, guy dating her mom back in the day? I'll bet you it was. I'll bet you it was. And I don't know. Angel shows up again because Angel's always showing up in these issues. Um, and let's see. Yeah. Angel shows up and they're in the bedroom um, with the guy who blackmailed them or the guy that they were supposed to kill by the blackmailer and the sister and the guy both know each other. Um, and I'm lost at this point. It started slipping away from me a little bit, but check this out. I got this one in newsstand and direct. But this again is Bill Sankovich. And this again is just gorgeous, gorgeous work. See what happens in issue 28. Uh, Ken gets him off a trial, or no, this is a whole nother rogue chase. Um, yeah, not many people did care, um, except Guy Rich wanted to use it for his own anti mutant stuff. So, Rogue chases them around the Warren Worthington compound while they're in. Oh my gosh, what just happened? I just lost my screen for a second. Um, this is like almost entirely a rogue, angry at Dazzler issue. And they both fighting in Rolls Royces. And they're both fighting on a compound. And they're both fighting in a plane. Um, Dazzler uses the sound of the jet of the plane or the propeller of the plane to get more power. Um, yeah, it's still this like short-haired, angry-faced rogue. Not the one that's kissing Gambit later on that everyone's like, oh, Rogue. This is just a, an ugly early iteration of Rogue. But then Dazzler gets pissed, and we see this new type of light power she can use there. We haven't seen that particular artwork there. Usually they have different styles of artwork for different powers. And, yeah, I think that's it. They knock Rogue out, and then Dazzler's going to take her somewhere. I don't know exactly where she's taking her in the trunk of a car. But she is. Dazzler's allowed. You know. She went through all that, so she can. So we're getting close there. About 10 issues left. So like I said, I'm missing a few. That's 28. And then I'm missing 29, 30, and 31. That was the biggest gap I have. So 29, 30, and 31 are also Sankovich covers that I'm missing. I assume the Sankovich covers, because this one is... Um, 
And so she's now totally out of that white outfit. I'm not exactly sure what happened in the um, in those missing issues, but she's now become an aerobics instructor. She just wanted to point it out. She's, and of course, the Inhumans need her help. So there's this thing where she's not only doing that, but she's helping the humans and she wants to go into modeling. And one of her classmates is kind of encouraging her to go into modeling because she's doing that too. And there's a battle with weird guys in Adeline or somewhere. She did want to get physical. Absolutely. Um, and Reed Richards pops up because, you know, he, the Fantastic Four are the ones who set up the humans on a base in the dark side of the moon. New Adeline, I believe, or Adeline. New Adeline is somewhere different. Um, and Dazzler goes home, and that's it. And then uh, she gets an argument with the manager. She says, guess I was in another world. Uh, yeah, aggressive, relaxing. Thanks for showing up. I, that's a really great way of putting it, right? She's She can't get out of her own way. She can't settle for success. But that's part of, like, the struggle, you know, every character needs a struggle and it's the struggle to just, can I just be a singer if I've got these powers and this, this bad past with my parents? And I guess the answer is no. So here's that famous issue. Dazzler in Schiller. And so I thought it was just a cover homage. Um, but it's not the entire thing is about she gets to be in this music video but then it turns out that the guy is a dangerous producer who causes accidents on his set and then calls like the newspapers and the tv news to like come film it so that he can become more popular so she gets made up to look like a zombie there's zombie dazzler and um he treats that issue now. The comics have all the fillers you need for five each. Uh, I'm going to try to find them. Uh, unless it's five cents, I'm going to try to find them a bit cheaper. But thank you. Um, so, yeah, she, she she does this, and then Teddy shows up. Teddy, remind you of anybody from the 80s? That's Teddy. Um, he's so cute, Dazzler says. And so he's the star of this. And I even like this is really great artwork, like, you can see, oops, see if I can find that for you. You can see that they're dancing to the thriller dance here. Right? You can just tell that that's what they're dancing to, just the way they're moving. Um, yeah, the Didier, man, I watched that HBO documentary and I couldn't, I can't listen to his music anymore. So anyway, Dazzler is buried alive, which seems crazy. Everybody was buried alive and given an air hose, which Give me an air hose. You ain't bearing me alive. I'm sorry. Um, so then uh, the director cuts it, and he freaks out. He's like, oh, my God, her air hose is gone, even though he was the one who did that. But she had used laser light to make a hole that she could breathe through, and now she's breaking out, and she gives the naughty director a scare, a real scare by going after him. Bob Benson, you're to blame. It's kind of funny. She's coming into her own, a little bit more confidence and stuff. I like that. And then he gets arrested at the end. So this is really a, a one-shot issue. I don't, like I said, I don't know what happened in um, 29, 30, and 31, what made her give up the scene career for a little bit and go into, you know, the, the world of modeling, acting, slash aerobics instructor. Maybe it's a little bit easier. Oh, this is another Sankovich here, which I really like. Um, Use material that wasn't supposed to be used. Okay. Um, so somewhere along the way here, and I think it's in a few more issues, there's a Dazzler graphic novel that I do not have and have not read. And in that graphic novel, I'm, I'm not actually up to it in sequence, but I forget where it is, so I'll talk about it. Uh, she finds fame in 29, but at some point in the graphic novel, She's one of the first people to come out and say she's a mutant publicly, and that like causes a whole bunch of problems for the X-Men and other people, and for her, of course. So I think that like 
after she got that fame, she then came out with a graphic novel where she said, you know, I'm a, a mutant and uh, I really need to find that and read that because I'm interested in the proceedings there. So anyway, um, she's in jail again. Uh, she did come out of the closet early on as a mutant. Hey, guys, how much longer is left on this? Okay, it's time for you guys to go to bed. Okay. Nathaniel, headphones off. It's bedtime, buddy. It's bedtime. You're leaving a campaign tomorrow. Sorry about that. Um, so is the stuntman in Joe, tell me if I'm imagining this. Is the stuntman like a really famous movie actor who she like sleeps with and then wakes up in the morning and he's putting on like a, a waistband thing and putting on fake hair and putting in fake teeth? I had this memory of reading something about Dazzler reading a Dazzler comic 30 years ago where she thinks the guy is all that, but then the guy is not all that. He's all fake um, and just very Hollywood. Tell me if that's, if I'm not like, hey, can you turn it off, Nicholas? I don't want to watch your cartoon. Tell me if I'm remembering that. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm reading about it. Oh, okay. Oh, you're following me along. <laughs> so let's see what happens here. Um, Dazzler vanishes. Uh, yeah, so definitely we're getting into more mid-80s fashion here and out of the whole 70s um, stuff, which is kind of just interesting to see how the, the fashion changed and comics keep up with it. I'm trying to remember how she got into uh, – so she becomes a model, but how does she get into jail in this issue? Um, so she's got a creepy manager. He's like, I'm afraid you misunderstanding my intention style. It's like, if you call me doll, you're definitely, <laughs> your intentions are clear. Um, so everybody's trying to protect her, but there's something evil about this model agency, if I remember it. So somehow she ends up in jail. I can't remember. Oh, all the models vanish and end up in jail because somebody's got this card from Revenge Incorporated and is trying to save them. Um, he called everyone doll. Right? So here's a bunch of models and bikinis in jail with, with Dazzler. So it's as fun as that is, it doesn't even touch the artwork there. Cool. So there's this normal looking guy who's like, yeah, I'm sorry, you're all in jail. I just uh, had to do this for some reason. Dazzler borrows, borrows a nail file to break the jail bars. Bed. Nathaniel. Bedtime. I will take your computer away. Um, but she's actually not using the file because they all laugh at her for the nail file. She's not using the nail file to get the bar. She's using it to create harmonic resonance that she can then turn into light sound and then they can break out. And so, of course, that's what they do. They break out, they beat up the guy. And um, again, at the end, why can't I just be left alone? Um, right? But I shall return. So more, more sadness. And then what I think is the last, yeah, I'm getting very close to the end, guys. The last Sinkovich cover, much cooler than the art inside. She comes home. Uh, her landlords realize she's a mutant, and they want to kick her out. But she's like, um, okay, fine, I'll leave. And then they kind of re relent. Uh, but she still owes sixty-seven fifty in rent, and she's got no like music prospects or anything. So now we see even like more eighties fashion. Definitely not the white one piece anymore. With the bell bottoms and roller skates, and uh, she gets a job at this all-female nightclub. Uh, first, everybody says they won't give her a job because you know she's a mutant. She gets this job. They're actually pretty good, Chris. But yeah, and of course. Normal women in here, except at one table, the roller derby team comes in, and they all order like a case of beer each, and they're all, because apparently you can't be in roller derby and just use it to uh, give yourself a tough exterior, you've got to be a total D-bag, and so these women just beat up the waitress, and then Dazzler takes over, and they're just, they're being really rude to this waitress, and they're, they're teasing her, and they're abusing her, the waitress won't fight back, because she's short, and she's taken it all her life, and that's um so no 
Chris, it's called Femmes, but it wasn't a strip club. It was just a club. And they actually say that. They go, this is, you know, there's lots of men's only clubs. This is a women's only club. And it really is just like a nightclub where we can go to drink and hang out um, and where they let roller derby girls come in. And at one point when the fight breaks out on this page, these pages here, on the next page, the manager calls the cops and the cops are like, yeah, there's a fight at a women's club. Call us back when something real is happening. They're like they refuse to actually believe it. What is it? A fight at the girls' club? Give me a break. Sure, lady, tell you what, we'll send over a hundred man SWAT team. The minute it starts snowing in Death Valley, it's like it's just, you know, it's super ridiculous. Just super ridiculous. And and even look at these this artwork. This is getting this is getting bad. Um so like, uh, you know, issue 20, I told you was that great double issue, really read well. Um, and now this is just, just silly ridiculousness with everybody punching and fighting. Um, and it's a one shot, one shot issue. Um, there's nothing to do. And I didn't know that, I, I can't remember if I ever read, I'm pretty sure I read this because this is my time period, but this Beauty and the Beast is a four parter with the Beast and Dazzler. I never knew that was Dazzler. I knew it was Beast, obviously. Um, so 36, this is the worst of all the issues because the bad guy in this issue is called Tatterdemalion. That right there is Tatterdemalion. Let that sink in. Linda Grant writing. So Linda Grant took over at some point and did a few of these issues. But Tatter Demalion is just a horrible, horrible name. And I'm really, I, I couldn't read this issue. Like, I just went through it quickly. I couldn't figure out what the heck is going on, um, who he's mad at, why he's mad. Um, Dazzler's getting more updated in her outfits. But I'm really, like, I just got lost. You know, this is something I could not read. Uh, and I still don't know what happened because I haven't read it. Sorry. Um, Dazzler's talking to her sister. Tattered Amalian's coming to beat people up. Um, yeah, there's nothing. Um, there's nothing I can give you on that one. Sorry. And 37 was kind of the same way. Um, but it starts off with uh, Dazzler beating up some dogs. So she beat up some dogs. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, let's see what happened. And then they're out of house with a guy who's rich in the woods, and she's got to fight this thing that came alive. Like, I don't know. I missed something, like, with that last issue and this issue. They got really bad. Um, I'm not sure who's who or who's fighting who. Uh, yeah, towards the end, it kind of came, came apart a bit there. Um, Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on. Mary Williams is the artist. Uh, the writer is Bob De Natale. So when you like start switching writers every two or three issues on a book, forget about it. But then, bam, this is an awesome issue. Now check this out. I've never owned one of these before. And this is, um, I think this was the one that I got. Now, this was the one that I always had. This was the one I got yesterday. The one I got yesterday is normal, not a newsstand, direct market. But the one that I had, I never even noticed this because I just got it for the cover. This is my first Mark Jewelers variant. Um, so it, it makes sense that I got a Mark Jeweler variant. Um, where I live, I'm near a uh, Air Force and Army base that's now combined into one base. Uh, and so apparently they put the Mark Jeweler variants into books um, that were distributed not on the bases, near the bases. Everywhere I looked up kept saying distributed near the bases. And I, I guess that difference is specific to say that they didn't put them on bases. But the idea was to let um, people in the armed forces 
get rings and engagement rings at cheap prices and different rings that they could, uh, you know, purchase. And so you see this one, all these rings say Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines on them. Um, so just really cool. Uh, unfortunately, you know, in perfect condition, this is listed as like a $10 book, Mark Jeweler variant, maybe 15 but this one's in pretty crappy condition. The other copy I got is better, but that's not a Mark Jeweler variant. <laughs> I should take the Mark Euler out and put in the other one. No, I'm kidding. Wouldn't do that. So anyway, this one is pretty cool. And I remember this one, which is why I already had this issue. Um, Dazzler's just chilling. Uh, she fights off a bad guy for no reason. But then classic 80s Wolverine. Right? He's sitting up there. This is the Wolverine I fell in love with. Um, just because... Like that costume to me is Wolverine. So he starts to take after her. And she runs into Colossus. Now apparently, um, I'm not sure, either in the graphic novel or in those um, late 20s, early 30s that I'm missing, uh, there is this big thing where the X-Men did this thing in Flash that they show in Flashback here where they're discussing Dazzler being on the team. And Wolvie's dead set against it. Wolverine is like, um, <laughs> yeah, Chris, it would. Uh, that's a really good point. Um, keep me honest there. Wolverine's like, I think she wants to be part of the team without actually risking her life to be a full member of the team. And they go back and forth. So, uh, and they, they flash back on Dazzler being in the danger room in like an armored outfit and just not doing too well. Uh, and so Wolverine's like, she doesn't have what it takes to be here. Um, she's like, I'll tell you what, how about this? How about you give me a, a, a surprise test, right? Just come at me someday, sometime when I'm not ready for it. And, uh, and if, if I do well, accept me, if I don't do well, that's fine. So then they go back to the fight, and you see Dazzler now again in an updated outfit. This is kind of like her superhero outfit versus her music career outfit. And so she is uh, she's going at it pretty hard. And they are really after her. And Colossus throws this massive, um, this massive telephone pole at her that she splits in half with her light beam. Um, now, somewhere along the way, we start seeing a shadow of a guy somewhere, and, and they're not really sure what's going on. Um, but she blinds Colossus and leaves him, like, drowning in the water because he can't see. Uh, yeah, where does she become an issue? Is that a Dazzler issue or is that an X-Men issue, Chris? I'm, so I've got 130 and 131, but I, I, I'm missing that issue if, if she joins. Um, tell me if that's in the X-Men or in Dazzler. Um, Oh, X Men four sixty five. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, uh, then Wolverine comes at her, and now she goes full blast. Like she's like learned her lesson. She's not letting back, and she goes. Uh, then I'll make this a swan song you'll never forget. And he says it's not enough. Instead of picking your shots, you should have concentrated on them. You blew it. And now my claws are within striking range because you let me goad and anger you into trying to overwhelm me. Um, and she goes, no, I let you think that to draw your claws, claws close for this. And then she's got, um, she turns her finger into like a laser pointer or laser with her light and actually cuts him up right there. And so like she showed, hey, sleepy reader, um, she showed him, right? She's like, dude, fuck this. I can, I can cut you. Um, he stares long, hard, then lunges. You should have put me out. You don't go for cute psychological points when the chips are really down. So it's like she showed him that she can cut him, right? She's not afraid to go one-on-one -on -one with Wolverine. She improved her strategy, drew him in close so she could cut him with, with her laser, and he's still pissed. So then, of course, Cyclops shoots a laser beam from out of the sky and he's like enough Wolvie. she proved her point good thing i stayed to referee so the cyclops playing the good guy again right and that's all cool um and so everybody's good now but in the end it seemed like uh 
it, it seemed like they wanted her in, except, of course, for Wolverine, who still doesn't believe uh, she belongs. But she's proved herself to the rest of the X-Men, and that's what matters. And then the last two... Oh, sorry, it goes up to 42. So this is a weird bad guy. Again, she's wearing this, this blue outfit. Um, it seems like uh, a bounty hunter who's shown up, whose name is Oz Chase. I believe it's Oz Chase, um, and he's got a like almost like a dire wolf as a pet that he feeds cigars to, and he's paid to go after Dazzler. So he goes after Dazzler, um, tries to capture her, but not before she proves that mutants aren't all bad by saving some kids who fell off a cliff on a bus. My dude, I have been doing, going at this for a long, an hour and 20 minutes. Holy cow. Um, and there's some characters in here I'm not too familiar with, but now we're like into like total mid 80s Dazzler. You get that headband and that wide lapel jacket. Um, so there's this guy in a suit going after her, and I'm really not sure why. Uh, then there's this other people saying, hey, you know, what the hell are you doing? So. I, I'm missing something here. I, I'm not really sure what's going on a little bit. Uh, but it's still Dazzler, and there's some people showing up. Not too sure who they all are. But then we see uh, Dazzler getting home, and we find, uh, who is it we find? We find OZ Chase waiting in her bedroom with a shotgun. And so he captures her in issue 39. And then issue 40... The road warriors come after her, who are like three of the dorkiest looking motorcycle gang you've ever seen, but they all have some sort of power, right? Um, they all have some sort of power. And so they're attacking, um, OZ Chase is still there, but in between something gets taken out of time or out of context. I don't know if you remember Secret Wars or Secret Wars 2, the originals. The Beyonder came down to Earth in Secret Wars 2 to try to like understand better what's going on. So he puts himself into like the body of Allison and he puts limitations on his powers so that he can feel all the stuff she feels. So there's like this crazy fight going on in the diner where uh, the road warriors come after OZ Chase in this diner now and he like won't back down to them. And so it's kind of cool, but like they're focusing on too many different things. Um, Dazzler comes in and now, now she's like friends with this guy or protecting him, even though he's been bounty hunting her and there's this big fight, but it seems like a lot of this fight is fake and it's um, all of a sudden trucks appear out of nowhere. Crazy stuff happens. And what seems to be happening is, uh, Chris, you'll have to share us with that, is the Beyonder is making things more difficult just so he can experience this fear and other stuff. Like this rolling tank appears out of nowhere that wasn't actually part of the Bounty Hunter or the Road Warriors or anybody. It's just like he's just making stuff get harder and harder and harder. And she figures it out, and she's like, no, wait, none of this exists. Stop it. And so he stops it. And they argue and talk, and then the Beyonder learns a little bit. Um, the town was crazy and upset, uh, but then they put everything back. So it just kind of goes, yeah, it is part of secret wars too. Secret wars too. The Beyonder was, was such a dope. Like I, I know the secret wars two was just this cash grab. Like secret wars one was so cool. And then secret wars two was just a cash grab. So then finally, by the time issue 42 has rolled around and this one, it's the only one that's got a price sticker on. I really should not have bought this. I know last issues are hard to find, but as I was reading it, I noticed it also has a page cut out of it. Um, right, so there's a whole page missing up here. Uh, so I got to get myself another 42. Um, Beyonder might be Jim Shooter. So Archie Goodwin is now the writer. They brought him back to finish this off. Jim Shooter is still the editor in chief. The Beast is looking for them. The Road Warriors are still here. Um, OZ Chase is still there, but then this woman appears and like, um, I'm, I'm missing 
I'm missing something, right? I don't know who this woman is. Some of the missing issues I had, I think, led into these last issues. So I'm really not sure what's going on. Um, I didn't read too much of this. A, I was pissed that it's missing half a page. Somebody cut something out of it. Um, but, you know, there's, uh, there's something with her mom. And then there's a lot of this, like, flashback and nothing happening but all this, like, narration. Which, when I was a kid, I could eat that up in the X-Men, but, you know, as an adult now, going back, I wanted to get through this last issue a bit quicker, because even talking to you guys about them going on in hour 25 minutes. Um, so, yeah, I'm not quite sure who this woman is. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it was War of the Realms before. <laughs> War of the Realms, yeah. But what happens at the end of this is Dazzler... Um, to beat this woman who's now attacking her. And this is kind of cool. This is like the end of Dazzler, but the beginning of a new step is Dazzler actually realizes she can take the sound that she absorbs. And I guess light doesn't affect this woman. She can reflect it back as pure sound energy, which, you know, looks exactly like the light blast that she has, but it's coming from her mouth, so it's sound energy. So she's able to defeat this um, being. <laughs> she made him too look like a zombie-looking character. <laughs> oh, my God, Sleepy Reader. Just, it, it's too much, too often, right? Like on and on and on and on and on. And then somebody threatens her mom in the end, and then the beast shows up, and then a guy... Um, Comes and shoots a gun. It's a wacky ending. Uh, almost like Banshee. Um, and then, yeah. She says goodbye to Ozzy Chase. And she walks off into the sunset with Beast. I don't know if this set up the Beast um, four-issue crossover. But let's see. Well, Hank, any suggestions for a recently deceased mutant lady anxious to make a new start? Lots of factors to be considered, Daz. For instance... Not that a dream of exerting influence, but how does the X factor strike you? Bum, bum, bum. Hmm. And that's the end of the Dazzler run. So, uh, what do I think of Dazzler? So, I think, A, she's a really cool character. Like, I mean, they built her up because there was actually supposed to be a tie-in with a record company and a, an album that I don't think that ever went anywhere. Um, but you know, that, that aside, um, I think she's really cool power. And I like the fact that she roller skates as dorky as it is. I don't care. Um, that is dorky. I like that she can roller skate and that she like carries a radio with her. I mean, today you carry, you know, something else with you to make noise. Um, but I dig all that. Some of the issues, uh, were really well written like you the early issues had some just dorky bad guys the tech master and the blue shield but you really got this sense of this this young woman at a crossroads trying to make it as a singer which is not easy but also running into all this stuff because of her powers um so i thought some of those were good uh then some of the later issues like that issue 20 where that all came to a head was was awesome um and yeah, I absolutely, you know, keep the white unitard, the roller skates and the white unitard, change it a little bit maybe for a tooth, but you know, um, maybe it doesn't have to be flared at the bottom though. That helps the skates and the movement. Um, but the eye makeup, you know, that's, that's great Dazzler. Um, really the blue uniform Dazzler is not Dazzler. The, the original Dazzler, you could update that white unitard and, and make it work. Um, Absolutely agree with you there. The roller skates have to say that has to be part of who she is. Um, well, see, the as long as there's metal in the boots, the roller skates are magnetic, so she can just take them out of her purse and clip them to the bottom of anything she's wearing, regardless of ankle support. Um, Kelly Thompson, you know, Magdalene Visaggio did the one shot that was really good. Uh, really loved that, like, about a year and a half ago. That was really good. Um and so I think she's an underutilized character. This series was very 80s, which isn't a bad thing. That's, that's what I grew up on. Um, the storyline with the bounty hunter towards the end was good, but there were too many disparate parts that I missed. I really would love to read the graphic novel where she revealed she was a mutant. I think that would be awesome. Um, 
And then the the Bill Sankovich covers, I mean, those were just classic. And that X Men battle with Wolverine and Colossus, uh, that was that was really good too. So yeah, I think Kelly Thompson could do um, justice to her. Jim's up just got taken off Champions. I don't know if, if he would be good. Uh, Champions is ending at ten with this new run where he had like thirty people on five different Champions teams. Uh, yeah, and well, Emma Frost is Emma Frost. Um, and other than the early X Men issues where we meet Dazzler 130 and 131, I don't think we get a lot of Dazzler and Emma Frost crossover, which is um, kind of upsetting. They make a good, like, uh, reluctant team up, I think, because uh, their powers and their outlook on things are so different. Um, you know, so I, I, I really enjoyed this. I'm really glad. I don't think I would go back and buy this. I've wanted to get a Dazzler one for a while. But finding it all at the warehouse sale yesterday was really nice. Um, yeah, you know, you could do a Dazzler team up with with a lot of a lot of different a lot of different characters. Um, you know, I'd love to see her relationships explored a bit more with Beast or with Angel. Um, you know, one of her many suitors, uh, Ken, the lawyer, Paul, the doctor. Um, so yeah, this was totally fun. I haven't sat down and read like a run of old comics in a long time. The most I've done is like one or two trade paperbacks in a row or like the Sandman hardcover. Uh, so this is really enlightening for me because I mean, a lot of times I collect back, back issues and I just don't, um, I just like, okay, I got all these, they're bagged and boarded, they're in the boxes and I never take them out again except to look at a cover. So doing this, um, it forced me through the good and the bad. And there was some really, really good stuff in there. Um, there was some bad stuff in there, but I think Chris, in the end, you're right. She is cool. Um, you know, you, you can't do tongue in cheek to make things work. You've got to have a white unitard with blue eye makeup, a disco ball um, necklace and roller magnetic dazzling roller skates to really do Dazzler. And if you are not afraid to do that, um, then I think you've got it, right? And then, you know, give her the struggles of, you know, you can't do it, the dad family part anymore, but give her the struggles of trying to make it in a world that hates mutants and is distrustworthy of her and in like the unscrupulous world of the, um, the record industry. And I think you've got the makings of a really good story. Anybody can go ahead and take those elements. Not anybody, anybody who's a good comic book writer, Greg Pak, Jim Zub, Kelly Thompson, a thousand others. Um, she's a much better version of Jem. I agree because Jem tries too hard to be fashionable and of the time, right? Um, Dazzler's just F it, man. This is what I'm wearing and this is what I'm doing and I'm going for it. So, yeah. So, hey, you know, Chris and Joe and Sleepy Reader and I know Downright Nerdy Podcast was here before. Um, way early on, uh, that new guy, Senate, was here. Um, a couple other people popped in, Perry popped in. You know, thank you all for being here. Um, Joe, I'm sorry, that's the last thing I was thinking of. I think Taylor Swift would make a great Dazzler in the movie. That ugh, abs of freaking lootly. Abs are freaking lootly. Um, I would love to see Taylor Smith uh, hit that because um, I think she would kill it as Dazzler. Uh, great. So, yeah, again, thanks, guys, for being with me. Um, I really appreciate uh, you hanging out. Uh, it's 1.30. Sorry, I've been out for an hour and 30 minutes. So it's 9.30 here, wherever you guys are living. It could be 10, 11, 12.30. Um, I got to set up the garage for my kids' D and D game tomorrow, but I got no work. I'm sure some of you have work, so I really appreciate it. And this is Tacoma Comics saying goodbye, so long, and farewell, and go for it.